What's up YouTube? Ryan here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where on every episode I am always contending for the faith, once for all, delivered to the saints. And today, it is the advent of our king. Stick around. You know what? If you're a confessional Christian, you get to rejoice because we are finally done with this crazy year. It's over. It's done. Saturday evening was New Year's Eve. Sunday morning marks New Year's Day for the confessional Christian. Why? Because it's the season of Advent. And there's so much to talk about with the season of Advent. I, I, I don't know where to go, but I think what I want to do, given the year that we've had, and given the things that I'm seeing kind of the charismatic church do in response to this crazy COVID 2020 year that we've had, I think we're going to talk about how the church end times. I think that's what we need to do. Because what I'm seeing is a lot of end times prophecy. I'm seeing tons of YouTube videos. The Lord revealed this to me. The Lord told me this. Watch out for this in the next three months. The vaccine is the mark of the beast. And we're getting all confused. So how has the church always, always marked the end days? How does the church observe the end times? She observes it through the season of Advent. That's right. Advent is the beginning of a brand new church year. And if you go to a liturgical confessional church, then you've noticed the past couple Sundays have been all about the end of the world. They've been all about the second coming of Christ. They've been all about the resurrection from the dead, which in and of itself, I don't know how you can be a Christian, read these promises of the resurrection, go, that's a secret rapture. It's not. This is how the church marks the end times. This is how the church waits for the second coming of Christ. And waiting, waiting is the key theme for Advent. Advent is waiting. We're waiting for Christmas. Now, how can you say that, Ryan? You have a Christmas tree up. Well, part of preparing for Christmas is to do just that, preparing for Christmas. I've had my Christmas lights on my house for three, four weeks now because the weather was right for me to um, put them up. I didn't turn them on, though, because we're waiting. But now the lights are on because it's Advent, and literally my house is a beacon. You can probably see it from space. I went full Clark Griswold on this house this year. And and of course, then the whole idea being that Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light that no darkness can overcome. I think that is a message that we need to proclaim to the world, especially in this crazy 2020 that we're living in. But Advent, Advent is, is, is waiting. It, 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 and I, it, it, it's waiting with sneak peeks. I think is the best way to describe Advent. It's it's waiting, remembrance of waiting, it's waiting for Christmas, and, and there's sneak peeks. So Advent is waiting for the coming of Christ. We recall, we look back on how God's people of old waited for the coming Messiah. And that's why we read a lot out of Isaiah. That's why we read a lot out of the Psalms during this season of Advent, because we recall their waiting for the promised Messiah. And now, on this side of the cross, we wait for his second coming. So we are perpetually in a season of Advent anyways. We are waiting for the coming of the Messiah, just like God's people of old waited for his coming the first time and his lowly birth in Bethlehem being laid in a feeding trough because there was no room for them in the main part of the house because of the census. So waiting, but, but we're not waiting for this humble birth. We celebrate that this prophecy has been fulfilled, that the very word of God the Father has been manifest in the flesh, in the person of Jesus Christ. And that this word from the Father, now finally in flesh appearing, was laid where? In a feeding trough. And Jesus, this Jesus, this Messiah would later tell us, he is the bread of life. Just, you know, your fathers ate manna in the desert. I am the bread of life. Where was the bread of life born? In Bethlehem, the city of 
bread. Where was the bread of life that comes down from heaven laid? He was laid in a feeding trough. And this brings us to our sneak peek. The not yet, but right now at the same time, the sacraments. So Advent is about the promise of the Messiah and how God's people of old waited. Advent is about us waiting for him to come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. But he comes to us now. And that is the sneak peek. So maybe a Christmas tree up uh, during the season of Advent is a sneak peek. Maybe having Christmas lights on on the outside of the house is a sneak peek. Maybe as we're preparing for Christmas, as we're waiting for Christmas to come, we get ourselves a sneak peek. And the sneak peek happens in the sacraments. When we go to church, when someone is baptized into Christ Jesus, he, send, he descends from heaven, touches earth, and acts for our salvation. And when we participate in the Lord's Supper, he descends from heaven into bread, into wine, and he acts for our salvation. Christ comes to us now. And that's important, especially when we look at how does the church do end times? Because there's no shortage in this crazy 2020 of YouTube prophets out there saying, the Lord told me this, the Lord revealed that to me, the vaccine is the mark of the beast. You know, There's no shortage of that, but how does the church do the end times? We do it quietly. We light candles, the Advent wreath. We light the violet candles, and on the third Sunday of Advent, the rose candle. And then on Christmas Eve, we light the white candle in the center that reminds us that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The light of God come into the world, the light shining in the darkness. And if there's anything that we need in 2020, it's a light shining in the darkness. And that light is Christ, and he is the light that no darkness can overcome. So we wait for him to come again, just like the people of old waited for him to come the first time, and we recognize that he comes to us now. He comes to us in water and word when we are buried with him into death by baptism and raised with him by the power of his resurrection into newness of life. He comes to us now in bread and wine and says, take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Take and drink. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. He comes now. And understanding that Jesus comes now is crucial to sustaining us on the way as we wait for him to come again. And if you really want to listen to the voice of the prophets, you know, you're you're, you know, the, 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 the prophecies that will be poured out. A prophet is someone who speaks the word of God, and that's it. So if you go to church on Sunday and your pastor is reading to you from the scriptures, that's the prophet speaking the prophecy from God. A pastor reading the Bible, that's it. That's the prophecy that we're supposed to be paying attention to. So stop, reset. It's a brand new year. You don't need to watch the YouTube prophets. You don't need to see visions or have dreams. Read the word. Read what God did through the people of old to bring about the promised Messiah for you. Meet the promised Messiah for you in word and sacrament through the office of the ministry and through the institution of the church. And wait with the church for the coming of the bridegroom. So it's okay to get little or sometimes big sneak peeks <laughs> at what's coming. Um, but always remember, we're waiting. That's what Advent is. It's waiting. And it's a brand new year for the Christian. When the sun set on Saturday evening, the new year began. It's a brand new year. And so while the year may change, Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today and forever. And he comes to us yesterday in the manger, today in word and sacrament, and forever when he comes again in glory to judge both the living and the dead. I would highly encourage you to participate in the Advent season by 
waiting for Christmas. Turn off the holly jolly stuff. Listen to Luther and Public Radio. They're playing Advent music right now. For the 12 days of Christmas, starting on Christmas Day, then you will be fully prepared and you will be able to embrace for 12 whole days the season of Christmas and really enjoy those 12 days of Christmas because you waited. We live in a culture where we don't want to wait. So I highly encourage you, let's do Advent. Let's wait. Let's dive into the word, read what God has done through the prophets of old, understand when we go to church on Sunday what he is doing now when he comes to us in his body and blood, and wait with the church Catholic for him to come again. And all we need as far as words from the prophets is our pastor reading the scriptures to us, or us reading the scriptures out loud to ourselves. That's all we need. It's all that we need to sustain us in this life. It's all that, it, it's what has gotten us through 2020. It's the steadfastness of the Lord and him coming to us now. So get that Advent candles, get the Advent candles out, light them on the Sundays of Advent and read the word of God, sing the beautiful hymnody of the church from the season of Advent and let's wait for Christmas. And we're, as the people of old waited, we wait, but we meet the Lord now in word and sacrament, and we're waiting for him to come again. I can't think of a better way to do the end times than to do it the way the church has always done it, by waiting for the Lord and trusting the words of the prophets, the sure and faithful words of the prophets, the word of God itself read to you and to me by our pastors. Advent is a brand new start to the church year. And if it's anything, we need a brand new start because 2020 sucked. So happy, blessed Advent to you. And I would ask that you join me in waiting for the Advent of our King, for the coming of the Christ, not only as the child in Bethlehem, but also as the King of the universe who will descend in the clouds with the trumpet call and raise us to everlasting life. And if you want more on the season of Advent, tomorrow I will be on Reverend Brandon War's channel. Uh, Rev Brandon War, check it out, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. And we're going to be advocating for the traditions that surround the season of Advent. Because we are by nature traditional people. And these traditions bring Christ crucified to you. Until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.